Welcome to the Huntington Way Show, where we help parents navigate the educational maze. I'm your host, Yvonne Strawn, author and founder of inspirationalhomeschooling.com. I'm speaking with Dr. Douglas Petersma, and he is the researcher for the National Home Education Re Research Institute, also known as NERI, and professor at Regent University. This, is, this show is brought to you by the Huntington Learning Center and Inspirational Homeschooling. You're listening on Power Talk 1040 AM, 98.5 FM, and 95.7 FM. Please like and subscribe to Power Talk 1040 on YouTube. Welcome to the show, Douglas. Thank you. Great to have you back. So let's uh, just first go over what the definition is of education. Well, I think it's important to start with, with definitions and meanings. We use words all the time. Words have meanings, and oftentimes we, we use them that we don't think about perhaps where they came from. I absolutely love going back to original definitions, uh, and I love using the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Uh, and a lot of times I'll pick up a, a word and I'll compare the, the definitions. And I'd like to read that for you right now because – it's not as simple as we might think, and it may uh, draw some things out, at least I hope it does. In the Webster's 1828 Dictionary, definition is defined as the bringing up as of a child, instruction, formation of manners. Education comprehends all that series of instruction and discipline which is intended to enlighten the understanding, correct the temper, and form the manners and habits of youth and fit them for usefulness in their future stations. To give children a good education in manners, art, and science is important. To give them a religious education is indispensable, and an immense responsibility rests on parents and guardians who neglect these duties. When I read that definition, one thing jumps out at me, and it's not something that's there. It's something that is not there. The word school is not there in that definition at all. Considering when it was written before the common school movement, perhaps that doesn't surprise anybody. But education, and a very good education, can happen completely outside of the construct of a school. If we consider our founding fathers, they were educated in a time where there were not common schools. It doesn't mean none of them went to any schools, but the foundation of their education was right there in the home. They're learning to read. They're learning character. They're learning discipline. And all of that factors in, and there were so many things included in that definition there that go beyond a math and an English science and history class. But now if you say education, almost immediately the connection is to school and the schooling paradigm and the schooling system. But that is something that we have come, as we talked about before, slowly over time to become dependent on the government for. I like a quote from a, an individual named uh, 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 R.J. Rushduni. Uh, if I if I got his name correct there, and I don't have the quote written before me, so I'm going to paraphrase it. And he basically said that anytime the government presume, presumes that it needs to provide something to the people, it also inherently assumes that the people will not provide them for themselves or that they are incapable of doing so. And that's really the place that we have come to in modern in our modern schooling system is to presume that the family can't provide this or that community can't provide this or that there is no other way outside of this bureaucratic monstrosity that we call the schooling system. And so when we look back at that definition of education, that's what it speaks to me. And I hope others can look into that and say, there's a lot more to education than simply schooling in the school system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a lot to unpack there when you look at that definition in that Webster's Dictionary. <laughs> so what does the Bible say about a parent's role in discipling and educating their children? Well, as, as much as I love the Webster's Dictionary and what Noah Webster put out, what God put out is supremely more important than that. And there are a number of scriptures we can go to. I'm only going to mention uh, a couple right now. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9 is probably the fundamental scripture that we would go to, where God instructs parents, specifically parents, to teach their children, not just to teach them, but to do that diligently. And he gives time frames from the time they get up all throughout the day until the time that they go to bed. And honestly, I don't know how that, as described in the Bible, can happen outside of home-based education. There are plenty of other scriptures. There's a scripture in Ephesians that talks about bringing up our children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. And that's the words that the King James uses. I'm a, I, I typically use the King James Bible. And the word nurture 
sometimes gets an idea of perhaps maybe the motherly nurturing that we uh, associate in the family. But that word nurturing is really instruction. It's teaching. It's doctrine. The admonition part is the discipline, the training, the chastisement when necessary. And so those are things that the scripture tells us that we must do. One of my new favorite passages to go to is actually is in Psalm 78, where we are told not to neglect teaching our children the mm -hmm. things of God. So the Bible is very clear. It is a parental responsibility, and I will always go back to that as a fundamental. Even when individuals seem to have no other choice but perhaps to use a Christian school or something along those lines, it is still fundamentally a parental responsibility, and they need to be involved and take that responsibility seriously. Oh, absolutely. And whether we send our kids to a school or we are homeschooling them, we are responsible. Absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, what is the father's role in raising and educating children? So I think as we have come to slowly change how education is done in our in our nation, we have definitely gone away from the father being involved in many cases at all. Obviously, we have families in our nation where there is no father involved for one reason or another. So we have single parent homes and there are things that those families can do. But where there is a father present, the father's role is absolutely <clears throat> excuse me, it's absolutely uh, imperative. The scripture that I mentioned earlier in Ephesians is directed at fathers. Fathers, raise your children up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. It is directed at them. I believe fathers are ultimately responsible. I believe biblically a father will stand before God and will give an account to God for the raising of his children. doesn't mean moms don't have a role. We know moms have an incredibly important role, and even the scripture bears that out. Uh, as we look in places like Proverbs, it says, listen to the instruction of your father. Obey the law of your mother. They're, they're brought together quite uh, coherently in the Proverbs, but very much more emphasized is the father's role. And so I think fathers need to be involved. Um, it doesn't mean necessarily that a father needs to do all the teaching in the home. We know that most home education uh, a lot of times is under the purview of the mother as far as the academic instruction, but there are certainly things that fathers can do. There are certainly things that fathers should do. Uh, I would say primarily the uh, discipleship part of the training of children, uh, but when they can, I believe they should be as involved as possible in the education of their children, not just as an overseer or a director or sort of a homeschool principal as sometimes, uh, sometimes we are called, but being involved actively knowing your children and actively teaching them the things of the Lord. It is absolutely imperative. Yeah, and that makes sense because even in the Bible, it does say that, you know, the the father, the husband, is the leader of the home and that he leads his wife and his children and we respect one another and you work together. The world so, doesn't like to hear that, but it is in the Bible. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So what is God's promise to children? Well, God's promise to children is that they will reap many benefits. Uh, and we can go to a number of scriptures in Ephesians chapter 6. We see that children are admonished to obey their parents uh, because it's right, because it's the first command when we've promised that it may go well with you in your life, that you may live long upon the earth. The Proverbs are full of general descriptions about a son listening to the instruction of their father and then following that to the anticipated benefits that God will lay out uh, for them uh, as they obey and as they apply. I'm actually doing a study on this at my church uh, on Wednesday nights right now, going through the book of Proverbs. And I like to call this applied wisdom. It's taking the teaching, the knowledge, the information, and then putting it into play wisely as God would have us to use uh, that information and that knowledge and that understanding. And that's how we can grow in our knowledge without becoming puffed up, because we know the Bible tells us also that knowledge puffeth up, and it tends towards pride. But yet when we apply it in wisdom, that is where God gets the glory from all that. Yeah, absolutely. And we really have to think about how parents have been around for a long time. We've been through a lot of things um, in our children, in our childhood. So when we are instructing our children, we are helping our children, it comes from a place of care and love. And we're going to try to do what's best and give them the best advice we have. So that also leads to them needing to listen and really respect parents. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Dr. Douglas, what we're going to do is we'll talk about the church's role in education when we get back. I thank you for listening, and I want to thank Inspirational Homeschooling and the Huntington Learning Center for bringing this show to you.
Welcome back to the Huntington Way Show. You're listening on Power Talk 1040 AM, 98.5 FM, and 95.7 FM. I'm your host, Yvonne Strawn, and I am speaking with Dr. Douglas Petersma, and we are talking about who's responsible for the education of our children. So let's talk about what the church's role is in education. Well, when we take it from Scripture and we start from the from the position that the parents are responsible, the natural next question is, well, then what is the church supposed to do? Mm -hmm. And there is something that the church should do, biblically, uh, as we see it in Scripture. Uh, parents rely many times on churches to provide the discipleship instruction uh, for their children. And this has come through the forms of, uh, of things such as Sunday schools and youth groups and, and things of that nature. However, this is not necessarily what we draw from the Bible when we see biblical responsibility of the church. There certainly is a teaching role. Uh, we know that men are supposed to teach other men who are faithful so that they continue uh, in the doctrine that they are taught. We see scriptures that talk about uh, ladies uh, mentoring those who are younger to uh, teach them the things that are written in the Bible. But the one thing I think we've done, it's kind of simultaneous. Not only over time have parents ceded the responsibility of teaching academics to schools, but then they've also ceded teaching discipline to the churches. And I think both of those are a mistake. And statistics bear that out. Sunday schools, if you take them as this is a discipleship effort, well, how are we performing on that? Again, I mentioned Barna Group in a, in a previous segment who's done a lot of research. Statistically speaking, Sunday schools at discipling are failures. And youth groups are not successful very often in bringing about discipleship because it really needs to be brought back to the home. And I think churches absolutely have a role in that, first, starting from the pulpit. And I will say this, and it may not go over well with everybody, but pastors have an immense responsibility to preach the whole counsel of the Word of God. And that includes on things like education. Oftentimes, if you talk to pastors about education, well, what's your position on this? Oftentimes, they just won't take a position. Well, if families want to send their kids to a Christian school, great. If they want to send their kids to a public school, that is their prerogative. If they want to homeschool, that's their prerogative. And that's as far as they'll go many times. But the scripture is not silent on education. It's not silent on who's responsible. Mm -hmm. And so the church, I believe, needs to back up the family. They need to support the family in this effort, both of teaching their children and discipling their children specifically. Of course, I don't see those as two different things. I really see those as one and the same. As we disciple our children, we're teaching them. As we teach our children, we are discipling them. And a disciple, when he is fully trained, as the scripture says, will be like his teacher. And the mm -hmm. teacher we want our children to be like is Christ, not even necessarily us. But we are responsible for guiding them into that place. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that if churches are fulfilling their role, they're going to be helping those parents gain more knowledge so they can then in turn relate to scripture and disciple and educate their children Absolutely. very well. So how does homeschooling help parents fulfill their responsibilities? Well, and this is something I brought up before, but the single most important thing is time. Mm -hmm. It gives parents time to do that. If you think about a child going off to a school, spending anywhere from six and a half, seven or more hours a day doing instruction at a school, perhaps extracurriculars after school, maybe homework after that, there really isn't a lot of time. If you look at the statistics about how much time is spent in the average Christian home on discipleship efforts, reading the Bible, praying together, things of that nature, it is minuscule. It is very, very small. Compared to the thousands of hours, 10, 15, sometimes 17,000 hours that we talked about before, it absolutely does not give time. I mean, we live in a world where we're busy. Ask anybody, do you have time? No, I'm just busy. We're all busy. Everyone's got something to do. What home education does is it brings all of that back to the home, and it infuses that time. The time is already there. Normally, we give up that time. When we home educate, we are bringing that time back into the sphere where we can use that to teach our children. It gives us tremendous opportunities to see moments, and in that moment, to provide a biblical instruction to our child could be in the middle of an academic instruction. Let's pause and talk about how this applies to us in our faith, in God working in and, in and through our lives. So it gives us that time, it gives that opportunity, and it really is the only way I see where parents can disciple and teach, train, raise up all of those phrases that the Bible uses, and they don't have to be done as separate compartmentalized elements. 
they're all done together and simultaneously. Yeah, and I see that in my own home as I'm homeschooling my children. I mean, I'll have an opportunity to disciple them in whatever comes up, whether it's something that we're discussing in our reading class, in in what they would call an education class, or whether I am addressing sibling rivalry. I mean, I am there able to, you know, reference the Bible. What does it say about that? And really address the character and Absolutely. the heart issue from within. And nowhere can you do that best than at home. Right at home. So, yeah. And I think that parents do have the tendency to um, say, okay, well, check the box. This is taken care of. i taken my child to a church and they are discipling them. So check the box, that's done. And so they don't think about, oh, well, I need to be doing this day and night. And if you're at home with them in home education, um, you're able to do that day and night. Absolutely. And you're not putting that responsibility really on anybody else. So I like to call that delegated responsibility. But unfortunately, nowhere in the Bible do we find an admonition that as parents we are supposed to or encouraged to delegate the teaching, training, or discipling of our children. Yeah, absolutely. So what is your best encouragement for the homeschool parent who is hesitant to homeschool? Because they may feel anxiety over the idea of the responsibility of educating their child being fully on their shoulders. Absolutely. Well, the sarcastic side of me wants to say, join the club, <laughs> right? because I've been there, uh, which is simply to say, I understand. And if you ask just about any other homeschool parent who's been doing this for any length of time, they're going to say the same thing. I understand. Whether you're starting out in kindergarten and your child was never in a, 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 an institutional school or whether you're pulling them out of school, there is a huge amount of responsibility, huge amount of things that we need to think of, and it can be overwhelming. But this is what I tell parents. You're not going to fail them. You have the greatest vested interest in your child's success academically, spiritually, in all of those realms. However, institutionalized school, you have a high probability that they will fail your children in one way or another. Perhaps they go to a school that just happens to be great at academics. There are going to be other things that you're going to say, well, they failed in this area. We talked about some of those before. Talk about the bullying. Talk about the peer influence and things of that nature. So if we start from the presupposition, as we do, the Bible says that it is our responsibility. I believe we can encourage parents by saying this, what God calls you to do he will equip you and enable you to do, and he will carry that through to its end as he desires. And so as long as we're trusting in the word of God, that is the encouragement that parents need. Outside of that, I would say that taking it piece by piece, there is a lot to be considered, but if it's taken in small chunks, you take the, the biggest priority thing you need to solve first, you solve that, then you do the next one. Sooner or later, you realize it is actually something that you can accomplish even though it may seem overwhelming at the beginning. Absolutely. And I want to remind parents out there that we have a lot of resources as a homeschooling family. There's tons of curriculum. There's tons of activities. Um, we have each other that we can rely on. And because we love our children, we will figure it out. It's Absolutely. just like when your child is having a hard time walking. Well, you know, how can I help them? Right? So that's what a parent does. It's, we love our children. So we just work on figuring out how we can help them. Exactly. Yes. So what advice do you have for homeschool parents that actually feel overwhelmed and they want to quit because we've all been there? Well, and you, <laughs> and you actually hit on uh, what, what is the answer to that question. And the answer is community. I could just simply say don't quit because that sounds easy. But the help that we're looking for, that the help that other families are looking for, it's found in community. And unless you live in one of these extremely rural areas, more likely than not, there's a homeschool community in your area. I live in a town of 65,000 people, and there are more than a dozen organizations, meetup groups, co-ops, uh, just a huge array. Some are aligned by perhaps a faith organization. We all get together because we, we, we attend the same church. Some of them are aligned because of a curriculum they use. You've probably heard of uh, classical conversations. They get together uh, or, or any other curriculum. Some of them are simply aligned because uh, they have other commonalities. I find those communities. If there's a thought to quitting, I would always tell people, be encouraged. You're not the first one to think about quitting. Chances are we've all thought about it at one time or another. If you get in that community, the community is going to surround you, and I guarantee they're going to say what we say here. Don't quit. 
We will find a way together. If you need help, we'll find you the help you need. If you need a resource, we'll help you get the resource. I have found that home educating families are extremely benevolent, extremely helpful, and extremely strong in community. Absolutely. That is the best answer. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, real quickly, why don't you share how people can find you? Uh, you can find me on social media at, at Dr. Douglas Petersma, both on Facebook uh, as well as on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. I had to shorten it on Twitter, though. It's at Dr. Doug Petersma. Uh, you can find me there, and I try to share a lot of encouragement as, I, as much as I can to home educating families, uh, and I appreciate any opportunity to be of service that I can be. Great. Thank you so much, Douglas. I express our gratitude to Inspirational Homeschooling and the Huntington Learning Center for bringing this show to you. This is Yvonne Strawn, today's host on the Huntington Way Show, where we help you educate your kids. Thank you for joining us.